unbeaten fighters and major performers. I can't tell you how excited I am about this. This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. It's Friday morning, the birds are chirping. They are, aren't they? Yeah. What you Do you want? believe in reincarnation? Yes. Do you? Yes. Why? Two reasons. One that's just come to me, and the other one was, like, there's this bird at home, I don't know whether it's a robin or a blue tit or something like that, but when I woke up this morning, my missus said that it keeps coming to the window and tapping on the window. Do you know what that means? What? That, that's like a wealth thing. Shut it means you're up. going to come into money. It does. Google it. I'm not Googling it. Um, but it did it downstairs. So like we was in the back room and she said it was like trying to, almost like trying to get her attention. And then this morning it was doing it again. And when my nan died, this was like 10 years ago, the day later, I was driving through Brentwood High Street, probably more actually, 15 years ago, and this white, it was a dove, like white pigeon, I was sat at the lights and it just sat on the bonnet and started looking at me. Like, when does a bird, whilst you're driving in a car and stop at the lights, just come and sit on your bonnet? So, yeah, that was my morning thoughts, really. I've never really believed in that, but you do. Yeah. What would you come back as? Ask me in 10 minutes. Okay. Um, my morning thoughts are, what on earth are you wearing today? What do you mean? Because I, I thought it, when I saw you, I thought it was Barry. Oh, mate. But, no, because Barry's got the same thing on. <laughs> Barry's got... What but, are you wearing? I've just got a coat on. I mean, just, really, have you? I mean, you... No, 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 listen, don't, no, no, this, is, this is a quality bit of attire. I'm not saying you know. it's not, I'm just saying it's a bit of a different look. Sartorial elegance. Mm. Sartorial elegance. Do you know when we have... I'm met? actually going on Soccer AM tomorrow. I heard. Yeah, and well, they said... I heard from you. They said, no, you actually said, oh, who are you going on with? And I went, no, just me. And they said, they are talking about the impressions. They said, would you mind doing a few? On air, live. Can I give you a, a task? What? Can you drop the letters in tomorrow? IFL? Yeah, at some point. Even if you went, well, people probably would have seen my impressions on IFL. Could you do that? I'll try. There's been massive we'll pressure for you to do it now. Yeah, okay, we'll try. Coogan, I might be able to drop in Coogan. Oh my God. But I think they just, I said, yeah, what you could do is you could show all my worst <laughs> celebrations where I've mugged myself off in the ring. And they're like, yeah, we're already doing that. I'm like, <laughs> So basically, I think I'm just going to get abused for an hour, which is standard, standard life, really. That's good. Right, yeah. um, when we haven't done an interview for quite some time, people think... A what? An interview. You said interview. Interview. You didn't say that. Surely. Um, people think we've fallen out. They always think that. Um, it's Brian Peters. One sec. Brian, how are you? Oh, I'm, in, I'm in the middle of a Coogan Cassius interview. So give me about four hours and I'll get back to you. No, half hour, I'll call you back. All right, mate, bye-bye. Um, yeah, we haven't fallen out. I've been in Dubai mm -hmm. for four or five days. Good. Two meetings, family holiday. The see you nice feeding a leopard. Yeah, it was an unbelievable. No, what was it? Uh, it was a tiger. A tiger. Yeah. Unbelievable experience. This uh, young guy who, AJ knows actually, he's got a, basically a, Zoo in his garden, like a conservation centre for it. Unbelievable. Do you think we'll ever see like a major fight in Dubai? I was talking to people about it over there. No. Because the people have kind of you know, over the years. Said the problem that they is, do it. is there's a great saying that my old man uses all the time, which is always leave a little bit of bread in the fish's mouth. So what that means is don't don't be greedy. Don't always go for the jugular. Let him have a little bit of bread. Let him have a little nibble on it. Right? And if it gets hooked, make sure that it gets some food. Because otherwise, it'll never come back, will it? Okay. What are you laughing at? No, I'm So what, what I'm with. saying is, is everybody goes for the jugular. Right? So they look at Abu Dhabi, they look at uh, Dubai, and they say, fucking okay, hell, there's money out there. These people aren't stupid. So people are going out there pitching 30, 40, 50 million for a fight. But no one's really showing them the sport, 
showing them the infrastructure, showing them the purity of the sport. But these people are, are passionate people, and if they fall in love with something, they will spend their money. So I'd like to quite go into that territory with something still, still big, but that's not going to cost them an arm and a leg. Show them the greatness of boxing. Show them this sport. And then I believe there could be a future in that region. But I think at the moment people are just going in going, yeah, we've got pack outs, 50 mil. Like, and they just presume these people are going to pull up. But these people aren't idiots. So whilst they love the big events, I think the model there is to go in and show them the sport. It's not something I'm thinking about, by the way, but I just think that's, that's how you do it. A bit similar to Monaco, really. You know, I think Monaco didn't suddenly turn around and say, let's bring champions, but it, it went. You know, it had backing from uh, the Principality. Albert loved the boxing. It's became, you know, and, and then you're in. Always leave a little bit. I like the way you just refer to him just as Albert now. Alps. Alps. Yeah. You got his number? That's it. Alps. How are you, son? Yeah, I'm all good, mate. I'm just with Coogs at the moment, so. All right, sweet. Yeah, Have you got Albert's number? No, 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 no. It's not. I don't know. I've met, I've met him, but obviously he's a he's a massive sports fan, massive boxing fan. Um, yeah. All right, I saw you yesterday. Oh yeah, the old um, evening with. Evening with. Um, yeah. I saw your interview with AJ while well, I was in the room. You were. It was quite serious, wasn't it? Moments, yeah. He always like. Do you know what he 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 doesn't like people constantly running their mouth about him and using his name if they're not going to actually do anything about it. And I think he just gets pissed off in the end, where it's like, like he'll fight anybody. He's proven that, and he will continue to fight anybody. He's not hard to deal with, but it just seems that I think the Fury thing was one where like he wants to fight Fury now, and he's. But he knows that the truth, the truth of where Fury's at, he's got no interest in fighting AJ at the moment. And that's best for him at the moment. But AJ's like, why do you keep calling my name? Like everything at the press conference yesterday was, I'll do this to Joshua. Do it then. That's, that's AJ's mentality. Do it now, come on. Why have we got to wait? So he just wants to have all these fights now. But sometimes you have to rein AJ back and say, listen, mate, you've had 21 fights. You want to be around for eight years. But you also have to weigh up the public anticipation and perception, which is we want it now. We'll come on to Fury in a, in a bit. Mm. Um, clarify. Let's get to the point. Mm. How many offers since Cardiff, the night of Cardiff, mm -hmm. have you sent to Wilder's team? Since the night of Cardiff? Since after that. One. One offer. One official offer. Because Joshua was quoted as saying you've there's sent been, him... No, there's been... In the past, we've had discussions with his team. Like when we had a meeting, we talked about the split and what we'd, we'd, what we'd offered him. That was back in November, I think. Um, so probably a couple. The last one, like the one since Cardiff, was an official written offer. And I think... I don't want to... I haven't mentioned the offer in terms of its content. So they've brought it up to the media and stuff like that. And I'm not, I don't want to do that this time around because I want to make the fight. And the more that we goad, and the more that we probably tell them the truth, the less likely that the fight's going to happen. So I've seen the reports of the offers that have been made. Most of them are accurate. But I know, you know, I've made mistakes in the past where I've been very vocal and I've probably goaded people and it's probably worked against me. So, um, I'm happy to talk about the situation, but I'm not going to start screaming and shouting at Deontay and Shirley saying, you idiots, how can you not take this deal? Because it's got to be right for everybody. We've run the numbers to do the fight at Wembley in September and we've made them an offer. Is it a flat fee offer? Yes, it is. The, the, the fee is five times, over five times his biggest purse. Okay, so all this stuff on social media circulating about a hundred million dollar fight. Yeah, but again, like it's so frustrating. I, 
this morning, I was laying in bed, it was like seven o'clock, and I was, some guy was telling me how much money was in this fight and how our offer represented 12.5%. And it was so, I'll, I'll tell you, but I live and die by these numbers. If I'm 5% out on the numbers that I project within my budgets, I'm pissed off. I'm good at what I do. Right? So we've run the numbers for a Wembley fight. So the offer to Deontay, I would say on a conservative budget, represents over 30% of the pot. Could be 35. We don't know. But we're guessing. We've never done a pay-per-view in the US market, right? Nor has he. People are telling me, oh, I could do 500,000 buys. Could it? What if it does 200,000 buys? Ward Kovalev, brilliant fight, pound for pound fight, couldn't do 200,000 buys. Golovkin's done fights, couldn't do 150,000 buys. So you want me to base these numbers on pure fantasy? It doesn't work like that, my friend. We deal with the reality. And the reality is, we know the numbers. So we've run those numbers and we've made an offer, I believe, somewhere between 30 and 35% of the pot for Deontay Wilder. Now, if it does really well, might be a little bit less. Might be 26%, 27%, 28%. People say, oh, you gave Parker 33%. No, we didn't. And by the way, let me tell you as well, what Joseph Parker made for the Joshua fight on the offer that we have made Deontay Wilder, Deontay Wilder makes double. Someone said to me, you paid Parker 13 million no, quid. Are you fucking mad? Like, you are so, it's so frustrating. I was arguing with this guy on, on Twitter at seven o'clock this morning. And I started saying to myself, why are you arguing with this guy who's telling you how much money is in this fight? So, we've made an offer. Again, you do know that this offer which is five times more than his highest purse ever. You do know that AJ won't make anywhere near double his highest purse. You understand? Yeah. So you do know that Deontay Wilder has been selling six, seven, eight thousand tickets a fight. You do know that Anthony Joshua has sold quarter of a million tickets over an 11 month period in three fights and done basically three million pay-per-view buyers in 11 months. You do know that Anthony Joshua is the biggest star in world boxing, don't you? You do know that Anthony Joshua has three of the belts, four if you count the IBO, and you have one. If you believe you win this fight, you must take this offer. Because in the rematch that you will get, if you win, you will make double what has been offered to you this time. And if you beat Joshua again, you, my friend, are the biggest star in world boxing. And even better still, you are a free agent. Do what the fuck you want. But let me tell you something now. When Anthony Joshua had to overpay Charles Martin for a shot at the title, and he was making like much, much smaller money in that fight than he should have done, he did it because he believed he could win the fight. When we did the Klitschko deal, we gave Klitschko a very good deal. Anthony had a good deal. When we did the Parker deal, Josh didn't want to give him that deal. But me, who's next on the line every time, says to Josh, Josh, believe in the process. Understand this. When you pick up another belt, you are in a dominant position. So every time he's overpaid, we've overpaid, from the debut, going through, to Charles Martin, we have consistently given record-breaking offers, career offers to these people. Dillian White made a fortune in the AJ fight. Charles Martin, obviously, I don't know, five, six times his highest career payday. Vladimir Klitschko, probably had one or two bigger paydays, but very close. Takan, three or four times his biggest purse. Joseph Parker, four or five times his biggest purse. Deontay Wilder, five times his biggest purse. So what the fuck are we, a charity? So we build this up, Josh goes in and beats all these people, gathers all the belts, just so we can overpay people. No, we're built to a position where we call the shots. And I'm sorry to fight fans who don't care about this, and all they care about is making the fights. And you know what? I'm one of you. I want these fights. But I'm sorry, having built from the debut to where we are now, 
and have him built what he has built, the spectacles that he is producing, the way that he has changed the game forever. We overpay, we overpay, we overpay. We get to a position where this geezer is running his mouth with Josh. And the answer is no. We will give you the number we believe is right. That is the number we have offered. Is there negotiation? Of course. I saw it's a take it or leave it offer. Bullshit. There was a time limit on the deal of 10 days. They're going to come back with an offer, apparently. But they can't... People say, why don't they make an offer? They can't make an offer because they don't control the money in the fight. Does that make sense? So I could go to, I don't know, Beyonce and say, Beyonce, I've got a great offer for you. I'm going to give you 50 million for a world tour. But I haven't got the right to do that, have I? I haven't got the asset. I haven't got the star. I'm just using Beyonce to sell the tickets to be the draw that she is. So when they come back and say, uh, well, what we're going to do is we're going to make you an offer with a minimum guarantee plus some upside. Oh, thank fucking hell, Shirley. Thank you so much. You're so generous that you're going to use this guy who's been built up, who's can put in basically the majority of the money into this fight. You're going to make us an offer with an upside. Oh, thanks, mate. Do yourself a favor. Don't bother making the offer unless it's a guarantee. And if there's $100 billion in the fight and you want 60-40, like you said, no problem. We'll sign tomorrow. Give us $60 million, you got the fight. The reality is we're putting the money up for the fight. We're not telling you it might do this, it might do this. All we're saying to Wilder is there's five times your biggest purse. You win, you can more than double that in the next fight. You win that fight, mate, you've got the keys to the kingdom. So that's hopefully the situation as well. Okay, I know you said that you wasn't going to actually... Uh, specify specific well, numbers. Well, fuck that, didn't I? No, I know. But no, so, I haven't, no, I'm not, you know, no, but this isn't, you have to take this fight. No, if no, you no. don't want to take the fight, but if you believe you're going to win the fight, how can you turn down? Like, if this, if Joshua was, flip reverse it, if this was Joshua, and he was making what Wilder is making per fight, and this offer come along, what would I think? What would, what, what would Wilder, what would AJ think? He'd probably think, I'd rather a split, really, but, it's a lot of money, and I believe I knock Anthony Joshua out, or vice versa. So if I do that, I'm making double or more than double in the rematch, and you know I've just I've, I've cracked it for life. We would take this fight. We would take this offer. I promise you that. So you were saying five times his last purse mm -hmm. between twelve and thirteen? Yeah, I mean you've seen. Listen, okay. you've seen. You've seen the number. What Again, I want to. I want to try and make this fight. So. This isn't, oh, Shirley's clueless, Deontay's an idiot for not taking the fight, Lou DiBella's just hired help. We want to work together to try and make this fight. So I'm not going down that road anymore, and I want to try and make the fight. But understand who is the draw in this fight. Please, please understand when you've got a guy who can't sell, I don't know, 10,000 tickets in New York in a brilliant fight against Ortiz. What are you expecting, if you were to take a, an educated guess at the offer? That Something will come like back? a minimum guarantee of $20 million, $25 million against 60 40 of the show. Just what, basically what they've said already, which is, we'll give you 60 40. You're not giving us 60 40. So, but if I can put it in layman's terms, you. Yeah to help people understand. Coon Cassius, you're back at Pizza Hut, right? That's where it was, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. You're in Pizza Hut. You're on five quid an hour. It was 3.15. Right, we'll call it five quid, because it's easier maths. Go on. Okay? Now, you're going really well, you know? I don't know if they did the stars or something like that, they or you've got a hat. Yeah. But you're, you're, on that, you're on that path. You're, you're smashing it at Pizza Hut. Very solid. You're the king right there, right? Now, let's make a name up. Bill, he's in Wendy's, right? Okay. Now, Bill's in Leytonstone, Wendy's. You're in Pizza right in Basel, Basel right? Now, Bill is on two pound an hour, right? 
Bill gets offered £10 an hour in a real tough job because it ain't Wendy's anymore. They're going to give him the supervisor's job at Wimpy. Right? Bill's looking at it, he's going, you know, I like Wendy's. I just turn up, I knock people out, i.e. I put the burgers in, it's not that busy, it's a nice life, I'm making money. But I've had this offer, it's £10 an hour, and it's in Wimpy. And I know I can do that job. I know I can do well at Wimpy. What are you going to do? You're going to take the fine, right? So that's, that's Deontay Wilder. He's going to take that job at Wimpy. Now you are AJ. You're sitting there in Pizza Hut, right? Everything couldn't be better. You're the man. You've got the stars, you've got the hat. And you know what? Even sometimes you get a few slices when it's all said and done and they're all left over from the buffet. You're loving life, okay? Now I come up to you and I say, mate, I've had this job coming. This is a tough job, but you're going to get seven pound an hour to go. But this is a tough, tough job. And by the way, you're putting your entire career on the line in this fight. And it's the biggest job in the history of fast food restaurants. And you're sitting there going, fucking hell, is it? How much are you gonna offer me? What, 30 quid an hour? No, we're gonna give you seven pound 50 an hour. What, for this massive job? To put everything on the line, what I've got here? Do, do, do you understand? Layman's terms. I don't know where that came from. Or actually, it was, it was a lot right, more complicated I'm, I'm, than what it's meant. Right. Basic maths is <laughs> you're being offered five times your career high purse. You're being offered nowhere near double your career high purse. You're both putting it on the line. Everything you've earned, everything you've built. Okay? So... That's the easiest way to understand it. If you want to give Anthony Joshua five times his career high purse, do you think we'd take the fight? And people talk, say, you gave Joseph Parker 33%. No, we didn't. You gave, uh, so all these numbers that come out about who earned what, it's rubbish. Deontay Wilder will make twice as much money that Joseph Parker made in the fight. Okay, and I class those two as very similar. They're both belt holders. They're both undefeated, young, good fighters. The Wilder fight is a bigger fight. That's why he's going to get twice as much money as Joseph Parker. But the truth is, is if he believes he can win, he has to take the fight. So we will see. So do you ultimately think that they haven't got the money to put up for this fight on their side? Of course they haven't, unless they use Joshua. <laughs> right, like your Beyonce. Of course, yeah. These, ter I mean, these, these little, words. yeah. But, you see, of course you can put the money up if you bring the draw into it. Like, I could put 50 million up, if, or 100 million up, or 200 million up, if Floyd wants to come and do something with me. I'll tell you what, Floyd, I'll make you an offer. It's, you, don't, you don't control the asset, you don't control it. And what Josh says, he's built this position to be able to call those shots. I and mean, it's not a case of arrogance, it's not a case of you do as we say, Deontay. We're just saying that, look at the facts, the cold facts, look at the the money being earned, look at the nights that are being generated and look at what you're generating. So we think we're being very fair and it's not, we're not saying take this percentage and it might be this, we're giving you a, a, a solid guaranteed purse. But I will stress again, it's the fight we want next. What's the deadline for this? Well, we're or talking to, I mean, we've got a situation, we've got a WBA mandatory yeah. with Povetkin. So can we ask for an exception permit with the WBA to fight someone else? Maybe. But that'll be wilder. That will happen No, well. not necessarily. We could, we could ask for an exception to fight anyone. Doesn't mean it'll be granted. But we've never had a mandatory before with the WBA. And we've never asked for an exception. So, it, you know, for that mandatory. So... I don't know, is the answer. Maybe, maybe not. Would they give us an exception to fight Wilder? 100%. So our options are, fight Wilder in unification, put a permit in for a voluntary, I don't know, Gillian White, Gerald Miller, Luis Ortiz, whoever could be an opponent for Josh, or fight Alexander Povetkin. But you'd have to put in one for a voluntary if you were to do that? If we were to fight someone else other, other than... Wilder or Povetkin. Right. 
So you put in a permit for a unification or an undisputed fight, which is wilder. You put in a um, permit for a, a voluntary rather than your mandatory. Um, again, I, I don't know whether that would be permitted. Maybe, maybe not. Or we fight Povetkin. I think, I think very likely that we fight Povetkin if we don't fight Wilder. But again, like we obviously make more money to fight Wilder. I don't... Wild, Wilder's a dangerous fight. So is Povetkin. So Josh is easy. I was with him last night. He wants to fight Deontay Wilder. You know that. Very, very straightforward. But also, he's worked very hard to get himself in a position where, you know, don't, don't blame Josh, blame me. Because it's my job. And you know, every time we've overpaid these people, I've said to Josh, Josh, when we win these belts, we get in a position. We are the governors. You call the shots. You are the main man in boxing. So I'm not going to do it again. I'm not going to just consistently overpay people in his career to, to get things done when these people should be taking the fight anyway. You spoke about potentially Joshua fighting in New York at some point. Mm -hmm. You said August. But is that looking unlikely that that will happen? Uh, he could fight Povetkin in New York. Again, he, we could take a voluntary and fight Jeremy. I, I don't know is the answer yet. And I think we're probably under a three-week time period where everything must be decided within the next three weeks. I mean, you can't necessarily rule out him dropping a bell. But that isn't great for the Wilder fight. So, but we won't be, he won't be dictated. If we've got two different mandatories and one can't be made or, you know, I mean, would, would we go to Russia with no real drug testing, with all the uncertainty? Probably not. So, could we make the Povetkin fight in the UK? I don't know. We're talking at the moment, maybe they don't want to. Maybe they want to try and do the fight in Russia. But then in that case, we'll definitely fight someone else. If he fights Wilder this year, will that be his only fight this year? Yes. If he fights Povetkin, there could be the possibility that he has another yeah. fight. The plan all along was to go August, December. But if he fights Wilder, listen, we've got a date that we'd like to do it in September in Wembley. Really? Really? It's giving you a little twitch, isn't it? Really? Really? Um, what date have you got in mind if it was August? Just out of curiosity. 25th. At Barclays? Barclays are our partner in the America in New York. That's where we'd be looking to stage Josh's first fight and he should be ringside, I think, for the Gerald Miller fight. Oh, really? Mm. I get the impression from Joshua that he's not jump or chomping at the bit, shall we say, to fight in America? No, he's not. For what reason? Because he loves it here. He says to me, why after everything we've built in the UK should we go and fight in America? Is that your thing? No. Um, and I have to agree with him. But when we spoke about the Wilder fight, I said, look, there is... Uh, there, is, there, there could be more money, talking a couple of million, doing the fight in America. He's like, why would we want to go to America? I said, well, because a lot of fighters would rather make a little bit more money. He said, yeah, but why have we built what we've built here? That when we give them the biggest fight, we take it to America. It's quite admirable, that stance. And it's not really, I want home advantage, but he's saying, we've built the ability to stage the fight here. And it's, history will tell you that these mega fights, historic, undisputed heavyweight fights, don't happen in Britain. So the world of boxing is, is changing and the commercialization of boxing is changing. And we've changed that together as a, as a market. And there are major things that are happening that will continue that commercialisation and you know we will announce in about three weeks time a I think the only word to describe it is historic deal that may change boxing forever um, and 
we believe that having built that here and now expanding into different markets that we should bring it here. No? What about the argument of his profile in America but to crack we, America? We definitely need to raise Josh's profile in America. But do you want to put the time in? Is it, is it a focus? He's really happy here. Like, genuinely touched by the support. Genuinely baffled by the scenes that are being created. No one in the industry is stopping to look at what's being done here. You've, you've been around basically as long as me in terms of working purely in the boxing business. Look at what we're seeing here. We used to be in, no disrespect to the Olympia in Liverpool, but when we did that one, Frotch Groves, it was like, this is just such a one-off historic event for the sport of boxing. Now it's standard. So we continue to raise the bar. Yeah, do you know what? After that, Frotch Groves... But everyone said that this will never be done yeah, again. Yeah, I've yeah. kind of shared that sentiment yeah. as well. So now it's just been done three times in 11 months. But no one's sort of sitting back and saying, what has happened to boxing? Actually, people are in the business. Actually, sort of TV. People come up to me and say, I can't believe what's happened to boxing. But I don't, I'm too close. So I never sit back and go, I know, mate, I can't believe it either. But we're just keeping our head down and working and working. But if you, if you do that and you, you build to where we've built, don't just mug it off and fly to Vegas for a fight. I think it's important for Josh at some stage in his career to box in America. But he's very happy with what he's got here. And he sees actually a lot of his responsibility to continue that growth for British boxing. And you know, like there's bitter people who just want him to lose. But there's also people like Tony Bell you says to me, Ed, we need to thank Anthony Joshua for what he's done for us. I was talking to Tony the other night. Joshua and us are raising the pot, the bar, in boxing. So fighters from the bottom to the top, their purses are increasing all the time. Compared to four or five years ago, the money available now for, and that, that comes from you know, a good amateur making his debut, uh, a fighter challenging for the British title, defending his British title. The money's going up and up and up and up, so it's great for everyone involved. You're this making more money. Yeah. So you're making more money than you've ever made. You're making more money than you ever dreamed you'd make out of boxing. Out of boxing, yeah. Of course. Mate, when you started up, you imagine when you started up and I turned around to you and said, however much money you're making now, I don't actually know. But remember when I used to give you 500 quid a week? <laughs> you were, it was, it was massive for you, wasn't it? Now you're making 10 times that. What happened to that? What, what, what happened to that? Because I wanted to stop because you started making like 50 grand a week. But on a serious note, and, and that goes for us doing the stadium shows, you never expected ever to be in this position, did you? Well, no, because when we you started, started out with a camera and a dream. Still got that. No, for three years we didn't make no money. No, but that's how it works. Actually, when I started out promoting, I think my first ever show with Darren Barker, we've done about 70 grand in the first night at Olympia. Dominic Spada. Spada. I was like, so, I had to go to daddy and ask for a raise. Didn't really. Let's talk about, um, obviously Tyson Fury. Mm -hmm. um, Frank Warren announcing a, a multi-fight deal. How many Not, fights is it? You know? Don't know, just yeah, multi-fight was the term used. Um, yeah, which you, you kind of conceded the Tyson Fury a few weeks Fury ago. Yeah, few yeah. Weeks ago. Yeah, I think... Um, but Fury seems to think that this pushes the Joshua fight closer by him going there. No, no, of course it doesn't. He knows that. He don't want the Joshua fight just yet. What he wants is, he wants four easy paydays um, and then maybe the Joshua fight. But we spoke... Where are we now? Last Tuesday. Tyson, Tyson's a character. Like He'd call me up and he'd say, right, I want to fight... These geezers, send me through the list. I mean, I genuinely mean this, you might be able to beat them. 
some of the people that you sent through. And then, so I want four of them, and then give me 50-50 with Josh. I'm like, mate, you want 50-50 with AJ? Yep, I'll sign a deal now. So we went back and forth, taking the piss out of each other. I said, he said, well, I'm gonna phone Josh now. So he phoned Josh, and uh, Josh called me, he's like, Fury's been calling me. I said, yeah, he wants 50-50 in the fight. He started laughing. And then uh, he texted Josh and said, look, just sign now, let's do it. Let me have these four fights and then sign now for 50-50. And that, that was it. And then he sent me a picture of him doing that. Calling your bluff, was it? Uh, no, I, I, we'd make that fight now. Not a 50-50, but we'd give him a lot more than we're offering Deontay Wilder. Um, but I, I think, will that fight get made in the future? Yeah, possibly. Again, I don't know how long his deal is with Frank. Two fights, three fights, four fights. Um, I mean, it's, ultimately, it's good to see him. Brilliant. Brilliant to see him back. back. Oh. He probably deserves a gimme. He's been out of the sport for, what, two and a half years? I don't think his confidence is... I know he, he appears very confident, but in terms of his boxing, he's not... He's, Tyson's not an idiot. He's, he's a relatively smart guy. He knows he's got to come back and try and... You know, but there's a level but like I couldn't pay the money for the guys he wanted to box because it wouldn't be enjoyable for me because I, the only one getting in the neck is me but um, it's brilliant to see him back he's a very good fighter he's a real character I like him um, I just think it's going to be a bit frustrating you know, him and him and Tony Bell you shook on a deal for 50-50 he ain't I mean although I know he's a favourite in the Bell you fight he ain't ready for Tony Bell I said to him after the Dillian White fight, let's make you against Dillian White. Does a million pay-per-view buys. He wants four fights before he even fights Dillian White. So we'll see. But ultimately, great to have him back. And I wish him all the best. And um, I'm sure I'll work with him in the future. Liverpool next week. Mm. The return of King Khan. Looking forward to it. It's a lot of pressure. New I trainer know. for Khan as well now. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't. listen, the prep hasn't been ideal. Obviously, Virgil fell ill mm. and, what, three or four weeks ago? And me had to look for a new trainer. Teamed up with Joe Goosen, and actually they've got on brilliantly. Um, but, I don't know. I just, I spoke to Le Greco a few times, and again, I know he's a massive underdog in the fight, but, you know, he really believes he's going to chin him here. And... It's kind of like a no-win for him here in that everyone's expecting him to win. So the only way he can win is to come out and look unbelievable. And to do that after a couple of years out, coming back from that defeat, it's, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but I see Amir buzzing, looking confident. Um, sold over 8,000 tickets, got 200 tickets left. It's going to be a sellout, which is great for him coming back and selling out an arena in his first fight. And I'm looking for a brilliant electric performance from Amir Khan. If he does win, do mm -hmm. you look to make the Brook fight next? Yeah, I mean, Kel's going to be there, obviously, in Liverpool, and that's the fight that I think is quite easy to make at this stage in their career. I think they've both matured to a level where they, the ego can sort of be put to one side by both of them. How much of that fight has lost its appeal over the last couple of years? Uh, or has it? It's, it's nearly as big as it's always been. Maybe not quite as big as just prior to the Golovkin fight and prior to Amir getting beaten. But, but then Kel looked great a couple of weeks ago. If Amir looks great, it's, I think it's just as big. Um, but Amir, because of Amir's popularity in the US as well, because of his profile in the US, everybody's getting on to me to fight him. So, Carl Moretti wants him to fight Crawford. You know, Heyman's guys will want him to fight Thurman and Spence and these guys. So, there's a lot of options out there for him. Manny Pacquiao's fighting Lucas Matisse. What happens after if he wins? So, Amir is a guy that many will feel that is a big name that is beatable because of his past. But Amir is also the guy that will go in and it has the ability on the night to beat those guys as well after we see what he's got left next week because the truth is we'll find out in Liverpool 
And I'm not saying that Phil LaGreco is Keith Thurman or Errol Spence, but he can fight. He's had a 14-week camp. He's in great shape. He's coming to win. And there are, it's going to be a big bill. What Amir can't afford to do, next week, Phil LaGreco is going to do everything he can to get under the skin of Amir Khan. And Amir already, already wants to punish him. But if he loses his head in the fight, that's when it becomes a dangerous fight. If he stays composed, he should win well. If he starts trying to bash this guy up and losing his emotion a little bit in the ring, that's when it becomes a dangerous fight. Good to see Kel Brook in, with, uh, in America the yeah, other day, amongst Kel... Spence and everyone. Yeah, Kel is... Um... He's really maturing now as, as, a, as a person, as a fighter. Um, yeah, we know his discipline's sometimes been a little bit erratic. He's had a lot of bad luck as well. But he has a new lease for boxing and, and lease for life, actually. And it's brilliant to see, like, as, as a, one of our fighters, but as a mate as well, enjoying himself, smiling, spending time with his family, in love with boxing again. And when would you see Kel Brook after a fight? He's been like to Miami, trained over there. He's been over in LA, just on holiday, but actually spending time in the gym, working out, trying to improve. And it's brilliant to see Kel doing that at this stage in his career. I think he's, I really feel like we haven't seen the best of Kel Brook. How far are you away from closing your May 5th card? Um, Obviously Paul Butler got a world title shot. It's, it's, it's quite funny because Getting the mix right between really good 50-50 fights and the big names. And when you do a pay-per-view card, sometimes it's difficult. In an ideal world, what you want is the big names in massive fights. It's not always that easy to, to do. But the criticism from the hardcore in Cardiff was big names, but not that many 50-50 fights. Obviously, Povetkin Price was brilliant. This one, you've got Martin Ward against James Tennyson for the European and WBA World Title Eliminator. You've got John Ryder against Jamie Cox for the WBA Session. You've got Paul Butler against Emmanuel Rodriguez for the IBF World Title. So there you have three pretty much 50-50 fights. Um, and then you have Joe Joyce, who will be in a big fight. He may fight Lemuel Thomas for the Commonwealth Heavyweight Title. You have Joshua Boatze on the card as well, going to be stepping up. A couple more to be added as well. Is Chisora going to be on the card? I don't think so. I'm trying to make Chisora attack for, for that end, card? For, no, for the end of May. Okay. Mm. I've got, so, Jamie McDonald boxes. We've got May the 5th. And then on Sky, you've got May the 19th, uh, Badu Jack against Stevenson. Yeah. As well, great fight. Then on the 25th of... May is Jamie McDonald against Inoue from Japan. And then on the 26th, we may box Kalia Fire in the States out on a card. We're just talking to top rank at the moment. And then that week after, we'll do a London card, either Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. Is that so it'll be like June the 2nd or May. So like May the 30th, June the 1st, or June the 2nd. Have you taken that 02 date? No. 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 The WBSS haven't released that date. Right. Which is weird, but I mean, we saw George Burroughs put a tweet out saying they'd be ready for July. 7th. Yeah, it's interesting. Like they're asking people to step in. Obviously, but, waiting on. I, I don't know, and I don't know whether George put that tweet out to say, "Oh, by the way, I'm ready. I'm all right. Don't take it away from me." That's interesting. I'm not sure what's going to happen there. Um, but what I do know is the discussions moving forward for the new season um, not speaking out of turn I mean it's been documented quite a lot Bantams looks like 140s and from the Bantam sides we're very deep in, in there mm. obviously Ryan Burnett I will look to put him in the tournament if the deal's right Jamie McDonald's fighting a new way he should really get a slot win or lose Paul Butler mm -hmm. if he wins he's had it off I mean they're going to open the bank for him so, yeah, we'll be looking to have probably three fighters in that bantamweight one and probably some 140s as well. You're not doing a show Bank Holiday in no. May? I was going to do a show on Bank Holiday 27th, 27th, which is a Sunday, but there's so much sport on. 
there's like the Monaco Grand Prix. UFC, Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. So, so you're going the week after London? Looks like it, yeah. It'll be June the 30th, sorry, May the 30th, June the 1st or June the 2nd, I think, something like that. So you might go Thursday? Maybe, yeah. What's your potential venues for that? Um, it's a tough one because it's going to be a show that you know probably does four or five thousand. But I love your I love your call. But it's just not quite big enough. Wembley. Wembley don't really sell. I like I like discussing this because I think it's interesting. Alexandra for the Palace. Fight. Alexandra Palace is expensive, and you have to bring in all your own seats. <laughs> so this is the okay. business you're in. You know you. Basically, what's happening is, I think this is quite interesting to discuss. You go to York Hall, which is very cheap to hire, costs are low, but you can only sell, what, 1,500 tickets, okay? You go to a bigger venue, that might cost you 40, 50, 60 grand, that gives you the opportunity to sell bigger capacity, but unless you can sell 4,000 tickets, you might as well go to York Hall. And if you're only selling 4,000 tickets, do you really want to be in a big venue? Or do you want to create that real good night at your call where you leave and you go for the bagel and you go, that was the bollocks. And I'm sort of feeling, after the run of, uh, obviously AJ, Kelbrook, Amir Khan, New York with Danny Jacobs, Hay versus Bellew, sorry, Bellew versus Hay. I'm, I'm mixing in a little your call. Then we've got Japan, LA for the FI, your call. And then June the 16th will be in Newcastle. It's going to be fucking mental up there. Can't wait for that. That's not a next gen show, is it? No. No, that's a proper show. Yeah. No, I'm not saying next what, gen is a proper show. No, 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 Lewis Ritson. Absolutely not. Two of the biggest stars in British boxing. Who's right? an impossible opponent for Ritson? Ritson's fighting Highland. It's oh, he's got to be Highland yeah. for that. Yeah. Oh. Good fight. He's 18 now. now. Um, it's a good fight. Very good that's fight. to win the, the British outright. Outright. So big, big and what about fight. Mr. Kelly? Looking at opponents now, uh, Frankie Gavin's been on, he wants it. Mm. Um, looking at other guys in the top 15 in the world, Adam wants to move him real quick. It's a good card we're going to build up there. We're going to do Valili against Iqbal right. in that English cruiserweight title that was rescheduled. Looking to maybe do uh, Charlie Edwards against Anthony Nelson, Geordie. Looking at maybe Gavin McDonald against Stewie Hall. Looking at maybe Glenn Foote as well up there. We get Callum Johnson out in defence of his British light heavyweight title. Um, might do the Conor Ben rematch with Paynord. You know, the guy who boxed yeah, at your yeah. call. Yeah, very good fight. Um, and then the, the London one, I don't know whether it's going to be a sort of pump next gen or it's going to be um, Ted Cheeseman, Reese Bellotti, Coley. Um, there is a chance Ben Ponor. Might go on that one, or, or during the... Uh, Any legs on a Cody and uh, yes, Luke Watkins? Yeah, definitely want to make that fight. Yeah, sweet, sweet. Definitely Paddy want to make that though, fight. Yeah. Um, I'm going to speak to him. Could that go on that card? Possibly. We're down to look at fighting um, Tony Conquest in a quick defence at WBA, and then fight. be up for fighting uh, Watkins in June, July, or maybe even do it on that May date. It's a good fight, then. On what May date? The, well, May, June. Oh, okay, you know, yes. Yeah. Okay. A good fight that is. So your dates in going into June and July. So we've got made a fit. So coming up, we've got Liverpool next week. Yes. Amir Khan. Yeah. We've got Danny Jacobs, Katie Taylor, Gerald Miller the yeah. week after in New York. We've got May the fifth, Bellew against Hay. We've got May the twenty fifth, McDonald against Inoue. May we've the twenty fifth is that? Yeah. Yeah. We've got May the twenty sixth. Could be Yafai on the west coast. We've got. May the 30th or June the 1st or June the 2nd, somewhere around yeah. there, we've got the London show. June the 16th, we've got the Newcastle show. Don't forget May the 19th, Stevenson against Jack, obviously not our card. But, and by the way, April 21st, Amir Khan night, flipping straight yeah. to New York for Charlo, Brona, uh, Brona yeah. and Davis. Yeah. So it's a big night. And then we'll do one show in July, maybe the 7th. And then that'll probably be us till the end of August. Where are you looking seven? I don't know. I mean, I'm speaking to Dillian as well right now. He's got the Pulev fight, which we're looking at, and also some options with the WBC as well. So, um, so is that fight definitely going to happen? I think so. Yeah. It's a good fight. And then become mandatory... For the IBF. For the IBF. This is what I'm talking about. So we're going to get to a stage where 
we've got WBA mandatory, we've got IBF mandatory, we've probably got a WBO mandatory. Yeah, but if you've got all the fighters. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, so... So is there a chance that Dylan White could take that 7th of July date? Yeah, he's got a little bit of a sore hand. I think it might be end of July for him, or he might do the August date. But um, What's your August date? Maybe August the 25th. I might box Dylan in America. Got some big stuff coming out there, huge news, so... Um, just looking at dates over there for the back end of the year, starting from end of August. Okay. Um, yeah. Good to see James DeGale reclaim his world title. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't see it, but woke up and saw the news, and great, great for him. I think um, he's missed out on so much money, James DeGale. Because he's, yeah, he, he really is, or maybe not now, but. Well, no, still now, because in the right fights, but he's missed out on so many big pay-per-view fights to go. Um, but he needs to cash in now, because James knows that he's not the same fighter he, he was. Um, and the heart that he... He got through the Truex fight, by the looks of things, just on heart and desire. But as he said in the first fight and the second fight, he shouldn't... He shouldn't really be losing a round against, against those guys. And he's had two fights where, I don't know, put them together and it's a draw with, with Truex. So James is, a, if, if he's truthful for himself, he knows he's not the fighter he once was. But what he must do now is cash in, finally get, he's never had a monster payday. So it'd be interesting to see what happens with WBSS because... If Groves doesn't make that day, that opens up Groves to Gale, which is still a big fight. De Gale Smith. Sorry, no. If if Groves doesn't make the series. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I thought you mean. And also, um, you know, De Gale Eubanks a big fight as well. What's happening with Eubank? I don't know, but no. De Gale has to fight who's Cat's guy next, with no exceptions. And not even apparently a unification can overrule that. And that's a horrible fight for James. Horrible fight. Because not a lot of people know who's Cat's guy. He's an handful. So I don't know. You, I wouldn't be surprised to see James vacate. To avoid that fight. Will you look to do anything with him? The, the door is always open for James to go. I don't know whether that ship sailed. But if he wants to make the most money he can make right now in his career... I can give it to him. I can give him more money than anybody can give him. Because I can make a big pay-per-view fight for him in all British fights. And that's what he's missed out on. He, you know, that ship sailed, as I said then. He could have made a fortune. But there's still time. I just, I'd like, just like to see him make a big payday in a big 50-50 British, all British fight. And then win and do another one. Or lose... And he's had a great career. He's a two-time world champion. He's an Olympic gold medalist. You know, um, I mean, uh, you know, all these guys. Contrary to uh, public belief, I like I like James DeGale. Um and I wish it could have been different, really, because but he boxed. He was rematching the world. No one knew that fight was even happening. And he didn't really care because it was personal for him. He just wanted to win the belt back. But I'll just look at it from a promotional, commercial point of view and say, you know, I would want to, like, you could have built that fight to a position where his next fight on pay-per-view could have done massive numbers. Anything else? No, no I don't think. Anyone you haven't spoken about? There's loads going on for everybody. Um, just really trying to box off those that May, June date and then the, the Newcastle date and then look towards the summer and obviously AJ, you've got Bellew Hay coming up which is a massive night for us from a big show perspective and also from a personal perspective because I want Tony to win so bad, as do you. So, what? what you Was you at the AJ thing last night or did you do your interview and go? Did my interview and so they said, who do you want to win that fight? David Hay? It was like, ooh, or Tony Bellew. The place went nuts. 
Because I've put on record, I'm not. What? I'm not calling who I want to win that fight. No, you want Tony to win that fight. Why do you know that? Mate, come on. I think of a lot of Tony Belly, but I also think a lot of David A. Yeah, but you want Tony to win that fight. Because? Because you like him more. <laughs> nice try, Eddie. Um, He's going to knock him out anyway. He's going to stop him. Okay. Pick a round, big boy. He may... I don't like to say this, like he may retire on his stall. Just because if he's getting beat, he may just turn around and go, fair play, mate. I'm done. There's a lot of fighting, David Hayne. He showed that in the last fight, but I just feel like Tony's got to get in there and dirty with him and pull him around and hit him and the break and just... He's got, a, he's got a street fight with David A. Got to be smart early on. And then he's just got to break him down and beat him up. I can't wait for this fight. I just hope that if Tony gets the win, which I believe it will be when Tony gets the win, he gets the respect that he deserves. And one of the most pleasing things is that, you know, those cheers that he gets now, people have got to see the real Tony Bellew. He just used to be like, you just, you should just think he was a loudmouth scouser. He is. He is. <laughs> But he's a, he's a lovable lad, Mavs Garza, who's a good bloke with a good heart. And I'm so pleased that he's achieving what he's achieving in the sport. And he's, you know, get another win and then he's going to lead a wonderful life. Okay. Give me some other options for Dylan White if you don't fight Pulev. Povetkin? I mean, look, the fight. Deontay Wilder, I mean, when you talk about offers, yeah, I up the offer... I'll talk about that one because I don't think it's going to happen. From three million plus US TV to three and a half million to four million dollars plus US TV for for Deontay to fight Dillian. Again, probably not. You know, actually over double his career high pay. Did you actually get a response back from that? No, nope, no response at all. And you sent this after Dylan mm -hmm. beat Lucas Brown. Mm -hmm. Said all along, Deontay Wilder will fight Dominic Brazil next. What's Same that? guy who AJ boxed five fights ago in his 16th fight, 17th fight, with glandular fever. Won every single round and knocked him out in the seventh. sixth or seventh round. What other offers have you made recently? Um, do you know what? Shit. We never made that offer um, to to um, Anthony Yard. Let's do it now. Because I've got Tunde's email address now. Someone sent it to me. Someone watched one of our interviews and sent me Tunde's email address. Okay. So you're doing this actually on camera? You're, you're writing the email? Yeah. Okay. Well, this has never been done before. I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to write. Eh? No, obviously not. Give us a gist yeah. of it. Oh. Okay, so. So, Callum Johnson v. Anthony Yard. Dear, send it to Andy. Andy and Tunde. My good. Buddies, how are you on this beautiful Friday afternoon? I should go. Um, hope all is well. I would like to offer Anthony. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Love that, ain't you? Okay, okay. To fight Callum Johnson for the British and Commonwealth <laughs> light heavyweight titles on June the second. In London, 
aka your backyard. I look forward to hearing from you. Kind regards, Eduardo. Dear Andy and Tinder, hope all is well. I'd like to offer Anthony <laughs> to fight Callum Johnson for the British and Commonwealth, spelt wrong, light heavyweight titles on June the 2nd in London. I look forward to hearing from you. Can you press send for me? Send. Go on. Cool. You've just bought a yacht? No, that's a, that's that's junk mail. <laughs> Camper and Nicholson's Palmer Yacht Show. Alright. Um, um Okay, the scent. Yeah. Oh. Good okay. money, isn't it? Yes. What, what, what I believe in the, the purse game. It's not as much as a numbers man like you, but it seems decent. Fair enough. Eddie Ham? Yes. Thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. Cheers all. Cheers, and people. We'll catch up next week. Yes, we'll do. No problem. Three rounds, three minutes, three fights. Unbeaten fighters and major performers. I can't tell you how excited I am about this.